Okay, good evening, senior parents. Um, thank you for attending our February 8th senior parent meeting. We are live and in person and online, and this is being recorded. So if you need to go back and watch it, the blessing of having technology nowadays. Um, also, the presentation, both in English and Spanish, will be posted on our senior website after tonight, along with the recording. So that's where everything will be. And I'm going to let Ms. Simmons start with the next part. Good afternoon once again. Um, on behalf of the Tri-Cities High School Administrative Team, we welcome you to our senior parent meeting. I am Mr. Simmons. I serve as your 12th grade senior assistant principal. Um, we have the proud principal, Dr. Lett. Mr. Kevin Locke is the 10th grade assistant principal. Ms. Raquel Alcindor is our 11th grade assistant principal. Mr. Tyree Simmons is our 9th grade assistant principal. He is the newest member of the admin team. He was here before as a counselor. Um, I want to make sure I introduce our wonderful counseling staff. So y'all can come up here so y'all can get introduced. If you had any students come from Tri-Cities, in the past, then I'm sure that Miss Michelle L. Dance was here during that time. Um, Miss Dance is the counselor for the what alphabet? I have A through G seniors and the academy, the Hershey Robinson Academy. If your child last name senior begins with A through G, are there in the Hershey Robinson Success Academy? Their counselor is Mrs. Dance. Tamora Green, um, counselor for last names H through P. Good evening, I'm Mrs. Morrell. I have 9th through 12th grade, Q through Z. And Mrs. Morrell is our head counselor. And it is National School Counseling Week. So we do want to thank our counselors for the wonderful job that they're doing at Tri-Cities um, with our students. So thank you to our wonderful, wonderful counseling team. Miss L. Michelle Dance is our 22-23 School Professional of the Year as well. So I'll be, we'll be remiss if I didn't announce that. So thank you. If you have any questions regarding your child, their graduation status, college career plans, you will see your counselors. Our counselors post in the Remind app daily scholarship opportunities. You're probably receiving emails from Ms. Worrell regarding scholarship opportunities. Please, 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 please make sure your child is applying. Additionally, our, Ms. Morrell or any member of the counseling team, can you give us a brief overview of the HBCU College Fair that's coming up? Yes, it's actually a slide coming up in there, but um, we will be having an HBCU College Fair here on February 25th from 11 a.m. until 1.30 p.m. It will be in the gym. Um, and we also, this is very important, we need 100% participation for our students completing FAFSA. So we actually have FAFSA Fridays here that Ms. Ms. Dance hosts every Friday. We have a representative here. Uh, however, we do understand that it may be difficult for you to get off your jobs during weeks. So on the morning of the college fair, the fair will start at 11. If you're here at 10 a.m., we will have a representative here that will start with you to help you to complete FAFSA. And that session will be from 10 until 11. And then let's say if you're not finished or if you don't make it here at 11, they, you, they're going to stay throughout the college there. Am I correct? Right. So and they're also offering virtual hours. If you're unable to make it on that Saturday or on Friday, you can email uh, any one of us um, or specifically me and I can set you up with a virtual appointment where they can work with you online. But we need 100%. If you've done it, check with your children's friends to make sure that they've done it. We need, we need them all to complete basketball. Uh, again, the college fair is open to the public. It's free, so make sure that they take advantage of it. Even if you have some other children that are not seniors, they don't have to be a senior to come. We have to start this process as early as possible. So you all are welcome to bring company or whoever else you want to bring with you. And as Ms. Uh, Mrs. Simmons stated earlier, we do post 
uh, I think Miss Green and Miss Dance, they drop things in the uh, remind for the students daily, as she stated. You also get information on navigants from us uh, with different scholarships and different summer programs. So I know most of you all now are really getting to check in the email portal daily for that, but also reminding your students to check and to take advantage of those opportunities that are coming their way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have Ms. Ashley Bice, our senior class sponsor. Everything seniors is Ms. Bice from planning visions, from planning graduation, uh, from planning everything. Um, I could not do this for the senior class without Ms. Bice. She does everything. I just kind of show up. Um, and then my right hand is Mr. Porter. He serves as the 12th grade um, dean of students, our administrative assistant. So anything you need regarding seniors, see myself or Mr. Porter. Um, anything else regarding senior class, a wonderful Miss Bice counseling, our wonderful counseling department. So we work as a team to ensure that your child has what they need to be successful. You like Mr. Porter is helping me now with this technology here. It's not working. A second. Just it. That's absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm working on our technology. So while they're working on the technology, I do have one more announcement to make. We do, uh, we have been doing senior evaluations, going through their transcripts again, making sure everything is good for graduation. Um, if they are not on track for graduation or if there's, you know, any gray area, you will be receiving communication from us, um, but we need for you all to really, really uh, stay on the students, remind them about their attendance, because that's critical. You can't learn if you're not here. Mm -hmm. So we need you all to please help us with that part. Uh, and sometimes we have situations where we are trying to contact the student who we need to, you know, get some other measures in place and we can't find them. I mean, in terms of them being in class where they're supposed to be. So make sure if you all can remind your scholars to please go to class, do what they need to do. Uh, if they have any discrepancies about their schedule or something they need question, they have questions about, make sure they're reaching out to us. But you all will hopefully know one in here is on that list. But if you are, it's just a friendly um, letter to let you know that they may be in jeopardy and that we need help to help them get over the hurdle for graduation. And of course, this, did you say this or somebody said there was a senior website? Yes, ma'am. What is that? The address? Um, I'll have Ms. Bice at the end of the meeting. I'll kind of walk you through how to get there. Okay, but so we'll show you. So the scholarships uh, and the summer programs that are coming up, if you're looking for the counselor's page, if once you go to the Tri Cities website, at the top of the page, it will say academics. And you click on that, there's a drop down that says counseling. And so that takes you into how to use Navient if they're trying to order transcripts in college. It tells them if there's a video that shows them how to do it, there's screenshots, just every kind of way it is to show them how to order transcripts. They can do it that way if they need to. Um, learn about FAFSA, if they need to go directly to the link on how to do it. All of those uh, resources are there for them. So again, that's academic and then counseling, and it'll take you to all of our information. But that is separate from the senior information in terms of the senior dues and all of that, okay? <laughs> Any questions for me? What's your name? I'm Mrs. Warrell. Give us one quick second. We're re reloading for the people online. That's fine. Just the means, okay. I hit you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as Ms. Morrell stated earlier, uh, parents, we're having an issue with our seniors coming to school coming to school on time and going to all of their classes. Um, hence, what you see before us is the bell schedule. 
we started 820. So that means we need our scholars here before 820 so they can get to class by 820 so they can be ready for instruction. Um, and we need them to stay for the duration of the day. Unless they have work-based learning, or unless they are duly enrolled, then they are allowed to leave during those periods. However, we have um, a lot of seniors that feel as if they have already graduated Tri Cities High School mm -hmm. and they can come and go as they please. That is not the case. That is not the case. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Does that include lunches? Are they able to leave? To no, ma'am. Lunch? No, ma'am. They're able for lunch, they're able to eat in the commons. Mm -hmm. They can come to the media center or they can go to the safe center. They're not allowed to go to Dairy Queen, mm -hmm. American Deli, have DoorDash. Yes, ma'am. DoorDash, Uber Eats. Yes, ma'am. Um, as our wonderful counselor stated earlier, graduation requirements. In order to graduate from Chi Cities High School, you have to have four units of ELA, but you have to have the right four units. Uh, four units of math, four units of science. Science is very important. Um, one science must be either physical, phys physical science, that's physics or physical science. Um, you either have to take chemistry, environmental or earth science. Everybody takes biology, and then you have to have an additional four science. That could be forensic science, human anatomy, uh, AP biology class. Social studies, three units of social studies, one unit of PE that includes health and personal fitness, um, their college career, three units, additional elective, four units for a total of 23 credits. Just because your child has 23 credits on their transcript does not mean they have the correct 23 credits. Hence, our seniors met with our, our senior counseling team, met with the seniors for their graduation requirements, did a transcript evaluation. Go to the next slide. So, in your mailbox, coming soon, probably by this weekend, you should have a letter. Looks very similar to this. It's going to have your child's name right here. It's going to have what tier they're on. If your child, based upon their transcript evaluation by their counselor, they're assigned tier one, tier two, or tier three. If they are on tier one, that means they're on track for graduation. Most of our seniors are tier one seniors. That means they're on track for graduation as long as they pass their required courses this semester. They will be able to participate in graduation in May. Unfortunately, we have some seniors who are tier two. That means that throughout their high school career, they have failed some courses. However, those classes have been built back into their schedule for this school year. In order to graduate in May, they must pass all of their classes. Okay. Those classes that they're taking now, as well as the classes that they fail 9th, 10th, or 11th grade. We have a small number of seniors that are tier three. So I, I want to be honest, like our tier three seniors, they may or may not make it. Seniors who are tier three may graduate but it may be the summer of 2023. I want to be honest. Okay. However, they have they have all the classes in their schedule. However, they have some extended learning classes. They have some Saturday classes, um, virtual classes. If they don't pass all of those classes, they will not graduate May 18, 2023. We welcome them back to summer school. So they can graduate in summer of 2020. Just because they're tier three does not mean they're not going to graduate. However, they have to do a lot of work in order to meet that um, deadline. This school year, our last day for seniors is April 28, 2023. The last day for seniors to be cleared it's May 5th, 2023. If seniors are not cleared by May 5th, 2023, they will not participate in graduation. They will have to participate during the summer. Seniors know that they can get that. about the summer graduation. Of course, it's the goal for you, for students, for us, for them to graduate 
uh, may, uh, by May, and if not May, by the summer. But again, they still have to have those requirements for graduation. So no, even if so we're saying summer, if they don't, if they have not fulfilled those requirements by then, then they may still have to do some other uh, work, which would keep them from graduating in the summer. So you do have to meet the requirements for graduation, and it is board policy that they cannot participate in the graduation ceremony unless all requirements have been fulfilled. So we every year the question comes up, well, they still have a couple more classes, but can they participate in graduation? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. That's not a Tri-Cities decision. That's a Fulton County Board of Education decision. And so the answer is no. That's the only way they can participate in graduation. Even in the summer, if they go to summer school to make up what they have left and they don't finish all those requirements, they cannot participate in the summer graduation. You can only participate in graduation once you have fulfilled those requirements. Thank you, Ms. Wall. Yes, ma'am. So the kids are already in their last set of classes. Have y'all met with them before? Yes, ma'am. So the kids know because they had a junior evaluation for their transcript. Mm -hmm. They had a senior evaluation, so this is not new to the students nor the parents. So when y'all select the classes or help, because some, sometimes y'all automatically schedule. Are y'all making sure they're in the classes they need, or is that yes, ma'am. That's why they have a transcript evaluation. So the transcript evaluation looks at the required courses and looks at the courses that they have, okay. and the, the courses that unfortunately they were not successful in. Hence, some of our kids who were not successful have moved to the academy because they can recover classes at a faster pace. And we do definitely provide alternatives, but um, and the majority of the kids are on track for graduation. But you know, we do have to be honest and transparent just in case there's anyone in the room whose student falls in a different category. You know, we don't want you to leave here saying they are all good for May. Um, and then sometimes kids come back to school in the fall, they're on track. Life looks great. And then something happened around October and November. And then when we get the grades back in January, it's like we have to do a whole reboot, like things fell apart for them that senior year. So every now and then, some of them catch uh, senior eyes, or either sometimes life events occur, and that might cause them to find themselves in a situation where they started to get off on a good foot and, you know, things happen. So, of course, we understand that and we do have the best that we can to try to help them to rebound, regroup, and to still make it for May. But we do have to be honest and transparent. But again, the majority of the class, the overwhelming majority are on track. Yes. Right? Are even tier two. So, if, if they're not in tier one, they all, the, the children already know they've been told that. So, so they've been um, they met with their counselors and also they have classes. So if you see like an FCCR class um, that may be built into their schedule during the school day, they might be tier two. If you see some built into their schedule, like an eighth or ninth period, that's just standard okay. learning. But again, we even if they have to take it outside of the day, whatever we have to do, try to get those classes back on there for them to make those we already have done. Um, and tier two, um, I, I'll use my own case for an example. So I may have a child that just needs to make this just making up one class, but because you're making up that class, for me, you're still a tier two. That means you are making up something. So that doesn't mean that they have like five credits that they need to make up. But for me, that says something happened along the way that this student had maybe that wasn't their strong area maybe it was a math class or whatever class english or whatever so i know and i think i can pretty much vouch for the others as well so just because they're if they're tier twos it doesn't mean life is over that doesn't mean that that just simply means they're under the radar they are making up something it could just be one class but even if it's just that one then you're under the radar, but you know, just to make sure that you keep an eye on. Tier three, of course, that's a more serious situation. 
Um, however, just because they're tier three doesn't mean that they cannot pull it out for graduation. But that does mean that, you know, we have to have your help, your support. Uh, you have to help tell them at home, stay on them, because once, once they leave here and get on the bus, they're at home with you all. So we need everybody to help, you know, tell them, hey, get your work done. Have you finished this? Did you turn this in? And if they're in extended learning classes or the FCCR classes that Ms. Simmons just mentioned, they don't have to wait until the end of the semester to finish those classes. In fact, we, we encourage them to finish those particular classes as soon as possible. The sooner they get finished, the, the more relief they're going to feel, the more relief we're going to feel, and the more relief you're going to feel. Because a lot of times parents will contact us and say, well, I don't want to pay senior dues yet. Well, we can't really tell you, you know, I, I can't tell you whether or not they're going to pull it off. I don't grade their stuff. Nobody in our counseling department grades it. So, you know, if the deadline is coming up to pay the senior fees, you have to make a decision about your student. But, of course, if all hands are on deck, we, we're pretty optimistic about this group. Um, but, again, you know, we do have to be transparent and truthful about where some of them are. Yes, thank you, Ms. Morrell. Um, we want to make sure that we're truthful. Um, yes, ma'am. Just so I'm clear, have you met with all the seniors or are you in the process of meeting? So the seniors have met with their counselors for their individual transcript evaluation. If you have a question about your child after the meeting, I will be here with my computer. I can tell you what tier they're on. I can't say the counselor is going to be here because I thank y'all for staying because they've been here all day. So depending on what time we end. But if, not, if you have any questions, you can please, please schedule a meeting um, with their counselors. But yes, ma'am, they have. You're welcome. OK. Um, I know that's a sensitive topic, but I, I want to be transparent um, with that. Um, Bulldog attendance, I'm going to let Mr. Porter talk about that. So Ms. Simmons talked about that a little bit earlier. So we are all seniors, but we want to be graduating seniors. In order to have graduating seniors, you, you need to have seat time. So we need everybody in school all the time. So there are four classes throughout the day. If they're absent for two, they're absent for the entire day. So some people are like, I was here, I went to first and third. You missed two periods, that means you're absent for the entire day. We also have hard, well, I'll stay with you. So five unexcused absence equals truancy. And you will get a letter home, or some of you all actually during each period should get a call saying um, such and such was not in class today. Uh, um, and that's automatically. A seven unexcused call gets calls from the counselors or, or as well as the social workers and so on and so forth as far as with 10 unexcused absences or more. Please have your seniors come to school. Please have them come to every class. Um, of course, if there's any excused absence, whether they're sick, they um, I think we can even excuse a college visit um, or anything those, those, along those lines, always provide documentation, a doctor's note or the case may be, and those can be excused. But a lot of seniors are getting phone calls home or we're meeting with them because they're not here. They may have the grades, but if you have all of you have 75 absences, that's going to be an issue as far as a graduation time. So please, please, please stress to your child, stress to your children's friends. Please, please, please come to class and come to school on time all day, every day. You want to or so there's an HBCU cut. Anybody want to HBCU? Anybody? Anybody went to the greatest one more house conference? Hampton. Hampton. The greatest. <laughs> and Jack. Okay, I'll accept that. I was born a hat to my father. Right? So I'll accept that. But for those of you who were not, who did not have the opportunity to go to Morehouse, that's fine. But no, we have an HBCU fair on the 25th of the month. It's from 11 a.m. to 1.30. There'll be vendors there as well as colleges, as well as the military. So if your child is still looking for a college or they're still interested, please, please, please come out to the college fair. Um, there will also be a FAFSA workshop from 10 a.m. to 11. If your child, if you have not filled out the FAFSA yet, 
time is running out. Please, please, please come to the FAFSA Fair um, and have some of the counselors work with you to make sure that everything is good as far as our financial aid. That was the FAFSA, FAFSA that was at 10 o'clock that same morning? Yes, sir. And that's a Saturday? Yes, sir. Okay. The 25th. Thank you. Um, dr you dress code. Yes, ma'am. I was gonna ask. So, what about the? Are you guys still doing waivers, or is that done? Like for the for SAT and ACT? Um, we are still doing waivers. That is a case by case situation, and they will need to speak to the counselors. And because the counselors are the one who get the waivers, I don't know how many we have left. Um, that's why I say it's a case by case, and I believe we still are doing it. I don't know. I thought you left. The QR code is on the academic uh, counseling page that I told you about, all about. That's on the website. If you go down where it says SAT, ACT, the request link is on there where the student can request a free waiver. Mm -hmm. If there are any available. I'm going to go to the website. Okay. Thank you. Um, dress code. So if I can't show my stomach or sag my pants, Y'all can't, the students can't either. Please, please, please check your child and make sure when they leave at the store, the door they are dressed appropriately. Um, as far as for tops, again, no crop tops, no spaghetti straps or anything, um, anything revealing such as that. If they wear jeans or pants or anything along those lines, they can't have holes or excessive holes. Some people will come to school and like from their mid thigh all the way to their ankle will be out. But it'll be a jean, it'll just be a hole. Um, please have the students Check them to make sure that they are dressed appropriately for school. Miss Bice is currently going to the website to show you where to scan for the free freight waivers and whatnot. So if you go to tricitieshigh.org, we have our class of 2023 website um, where all the information we're going to go through in terms of graduation and that kind of stuff is located. We'll get to that in a little bit. And then you'll also see the counseling department, um, their website with the fee waivers, FAFSA information, all the tips and tricks to help you guys with that. Last thing I want to show on this is if you scroll down just a little bit further, you'll see online uh, school payments, OSP. This is how you pay for everything at Tri Cities. So I recommend making an account so that you don't have to keep doing it over and over and over again because it is a process. <laughs> it's not user friendly at all. But it's what we have, um, and we don't take cash anymore for anything. But this is how you pay for magnet dues, senior dues, prom. Uh, I don't know what else I missed, but all the dues, it's located here. Again, tricitieshigh.org, no dash. Again, last thing on dress code, no hats, no hoods, no bonnets, or anything along those lines or, in, or even any ski masks. We do understand that it is still COVID and you can wear the, the regular surgical masks, but a lot of kids will come with full ski masks on, covering their face, covering their eyes and everything else. And then they'll try to wear a hood as well. So if that happens to be your child, please tell them that that is not allowed here. We will ask them to remove it. Uh, um, these are the code infractions. Again, if we have to ask someone to remove it so many times, then the, um, getting a warning, contacting you, um, tension, parent conferences, and sometimes in-school suspension as well. And while we're in here, our dress code, remember also we are a clear book bag. We have a clear book bag policy. Um, so no regular book bags will be allowed or even really any big purses. Because sometimes girls will have like a big, huge purse. If that has to be clear or you have to stay at home. Party policy. I, mean, I think we kind of already talked about this several times, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because I know y'all came for the real senior information uh, regarding dues and everything else. Kids are going into the real world. They have to get to work on time. So right now, this is their job. They need to get to school on time. And I get it. I was one of those kids who's always late to school. I get it. I understand. Uh, so I'm trying to really talk to myself here. Um, they just need to be to school on time. Our seniors 
have done a wonderful job with their behavior. Great. See your attendance. It's not good. Um, as far as the grade level, our attendance at Tri Cities High School for seniors is the worst. Um, so please, we know that sometimes the seniors they drive to school. Um, so please just make sure they get up a little early so they can get here on time. We're releasing our wonderful scholars um, into the real world where they're going to get paid for college now. So you're going to get to class on time. You know, you're going into a, to the workforce. You're going to have to get to work on time. So let's go ahead and start practicing those habits now. So it'll be an easy transition. Okay. Thank you, girl. Um, speaking of which, we really don't have a lot of issues with our seniors as far as behavior. However, I would be remiss if I did not say, unfortunately, we had to put two seniors out. They're no longer students at Tri-Cities High School because they made a poor decision regarding their behavior. Anybody who knows me knows I can tolerate a whole lot of things because I was one of those kids in high school, believe it or not. Um, it was probably on this list. Can't tolerate the group fights. <laughs> Can't tolerate the things that happen on social media and then it comes to the school and spills over the school. Our seniors, for the most part, no major issues with them. No, besides the attendance, right? Um, lately, we've seen an uptick in the fights amongst our young ladies. Not even amongst our young men, amongst our young ladies. So please, please have a conversation with your scholars regarding their behavior and how that can impact their future. <clears throat> because the, the choices that they made, two students will not have tri City High School on their phone. They've been here for what, three years, three and a half years, they made a poor decision in their senior year and they're no longer enrolled at tri City High School. So please talk to your scholars regarding their behavior. Um, it's, lately it's been our young ladies. Shameful, I tell you. Right, Hendrix? Right. We're gonna talk about There you go, guys. Sorry. Really here for Um, if y'all will hold questions, because I feel like it all kind of spirals. So I might answer your question. Just hold questions till I get done um including those online and then we'll answer all questions both face to face and online senior dues like i said online payment system like everything else in the school it's 350 um it includes graduation um venue all that stuff that's where most of your money is going is the graduation ceremony in addition to that it's the vision ceremony senior class picture senior picnic breakfast the senior class t-shirt, which the seniors have already received two t-shirts. Senior week activities, which um, this week is senior week. Today we did sip and paint. It was really fun. Had hot cocoa and apple cider, and we had two of our magnet art students teach everybody how to paint. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and then the yearbook. Um, it is a one thing. So there's no, I want to pay for this. I want to pay for that. It's all one thing, because like I said, most of it's going to the graduation venue. There are no refunds. Um, basically, we've already paid deposits and stuff to everything. So once the money comes in, it's automatically put towards deposits to secure everything we need. This does not include cap and gown, and it is due ASAP. Um, yearbook. Um, if you are interested in doing a yearbook ad for your students, um, you went to high school, you had a yearbook. I'm sure it was there. If you don't know what it is, uh, parents, family, friends um, can go to yearbookforever.com and they can design a quarter page, half page, or whole page. Sounds like a song. Um, and they just, it's, they're like shout out to the student. Um, I've seen kids where five different family members, buy different pieces, and it all becomes one thing. You design it, you make it the way that you want. We upload it into the website, and there it is. Um, I don't know what the pricing is, but it is on yearbookforever.com when you go there. 
It is due February 28th. We're finalizing the yearbook now. So if you, that is something that you want to shine your child, student you know, with love, that's a way to do it. Um, this is only Tri-City students can upload a photo because the platform will only let you, it, they have to be in the organization to upload a photo into Microsoft Forms. Um, but we are collecting baby photos for the yearbook. It's due the same day as the ad, February 28th. But parents, please make sure you talk to your kids about making sure that they get their baby photo in there. It's always cute to see what everybody looked like when they were little. Um, it's just a special moment to see how far they've come. So this is the link. It's been sent out on Remind. There's a QR code, but it's always something special for the kids to kind of share with one another. Um, this anybody can upload because we use Google Forms for this. Um, it's the senior slideshow. Um, we don't need more than like five pictures of each kid because if we start having 20 pictures of every kid, the slideshow will be forever. Uh, but we want pictures from ninth grade through senior year of all the seniors. So a couple pictures from each year, whatever. It could be with their friends. It could be them. We really want it to be on campus at Tri-City so it encompasses, you know, the culture here at Tri-Cities. But we want all seniors included in the senior slideshow. This is shown at the senior breakfast while they're eating their wonderful breakfast and before we actually pass out yearbooks. So yes, it's, it's, it's not, it's not something like hey, I will mix that and resend it out. On, it'll be the same link. I'll fix it after the meeting. Thank you. Cabin and gown. Um, we have a representative from Harco here tonight. So if you need to order your cap and gown, tonight's the night to do it. If you have questions about cap and gown, any anything at all. He is here. It's Rick over there. Um, he's waving, uh, but he's over there to answer any questions regarding cap and gown. And if you want to go ahead and pay in person, because the website's been a little funky this year, um, I recommend a person. It's just easier than online this year. And I'll talk about when they get cap and gowns. Well, I'm going to do it. So. As you can see, we have cap decorating rules, mainly just we want it to look nice. Um, two dimensional. Um, these are some things that they we can't have them do. Nothing inappropriate, no talking about alcohol, nothing like that. Um, we really haven't had an issue in the past. Parents don't know what's appropriate, what's not. So um, you know, th these are the, the guidelines for this. We don't want anything hanging off because then it's gonna block their face and all that stuff. But two dimensional, flat that kind of thing. I'm going to talk about clearance day, but that's when seniors get their cap and gown. So they don't get their cap and gown until May. It's earlier. It's like a few weeks before graduation, but they won't get their cap and gown until then. I know some people like to pay for them and like to get them off. Um, so just I will go ahead and make an appointment with whoever's doing that so that they know once you get your cap, this is the day I got it. Can you go ahead and decorate it? A lot of people will buy the ones that you can just plop on there. It doesn't matter, but I'm letting you know they won't get their cap until May. So you just might want to make those adjustments. All right. Attire. Attire for graduation and visions is the same, except for graduation, that's where they wear their cap and gown. They don't wear it for visions. And I'll go through those dates soon. For females, black dress. Sort of long sleeve. It does not have to be a dress. It could be a black skirt and a black top. It could be black pants and a black top. Whatever they're comfortable wearing. But ladies are in all black. Um, school appropriate clothing. Black closed toed shoes. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend no heels. Um, when we talk about the venue, you will understand why. Visions, they could probably wear heels because it's all in the gym. Um, but at the graduation ceremony, I highly recommend not wearing heels. I know the ladies want to wear heels and look cute after graduation. I say wear heels at the ceremony. Nobody's looking at your feet. Then when you get in the car with your family, then you can put your heels on and go to the family dinner or whatever. But 
it's a lot of stairs. It's a lot of walking. It's just better if they wear flats at night. Um, they're going to get white stud pearl earrings and necklace set. We provide that with their senior dues. Uh, they can wear their class rings, watches, and then just make sure for graduation visions, it doesn't matter, but they are wearing a cap. So their hair does need to be so that they can actually wear their cap and it doesn't fall off. And that's for both males and females. Males, it's black slacks and a white dress shirt. So ladies are in all black, guys have black pants and a white shirt. They are gonna get a red tie or bow tie that we are providing for them. Um, that way all the red is the same color. And then same thing for them. Just make sure their haircut will let them wear the cap at graduation. And then no cell phones, no purses, none of that. We just want them looking nice and classy that day. Um, the cords that they can wear must be from an honor society only. And those are listed here on the screen. Those are the only ones that can be worn. They cannot go to Amazon and order 50 different colors <laughs> and wear those at graduation. This is Fulton County policy. It has to be an honors um, society. Any medallions or pins that they get at Visions, they can wear those to graduation. Um, but outside of that, nothing to do to that. Seven tickets for graduation. Oh, I don't. <laughs> so seven has to do with the amount of students graduating. So this class size is a little bit larger than last year, which is why we had to reduce it from eight to seven because we have to enforce fire code policy. So it's just based on that. Um, let me make this very clear. There is not a, oh, well, at the end, if somebody doesn't clear, can I get their tickets? That's not how this works. It's based off of that. Um, we did the number strictly based off of who we feel is going to graduate, and that's what we divided. So there's not going to be any extra tickets at the end of this. Um, I do know some kids who have already reached out to their peers saying, hey, do you need all seven tickets? And they're like, no, I don't. Can I have yours? Sure, that's fine. I will say I would have some kind of written agreement with somebody so that they don't go, oh yeah, you can have three of mine. And then once they get tickets in May, they're not like, never mind, I, I need all mine. Um, but I do know that some people have friends or whatever, they don't need all their tickets and they can do it that way. Um, but it is seven tickets per graduate this year. It will be live streamed just like it was last year. Um, prom this year is an Enchanted Night in Paris. It is at Terminus 3.30. Um, we're really excited about this venue. It's got three different levels. Um, you're welcome to Google and see what it is. You have the main level, then at the bottom it's like a speakeasy type feel. It's just a really cool, I don't know, venue. venue. And then at the top, thank you, there's a balcony as well. So it's a nice venue. We're really excited about it this year. Excited about the theme. The kids chose the theme. Couldn't decide between an enchanted night and a night in Paris, so we combined the two. Um, but that is our theme. Um, it's $150 on OSP. We do have, I know some students are bringing somebody from another school. The rule and guiding, guiding, guidance for that is 16 through 20. Nobody younger than 16 or older than 20. It's just a safety policy. Um, they can get guest permission slips outside of my office, room 505. I've sent a reminder on there. A lot have already grabbed them. Same price if they're bringing a guest. Um, and we do need this. It's not due. I don't think we've actually set a due date yet. Um, it'll probably be March 31st. Um, but we do need this sooner rather than later because we do have to secure all of our vendors. So if you know for a fact you're going um, and you're ready to pay, we would like you to go ahead and do that now. I think the early is the 28th is their last day, so that means they got to come to school prom day, right? Yes, ma'am. A half a day, yes, ma'am. They do have to come <laughs> for a half day. I know. I just looked at the date like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have to come a half day. So for most students, I want to make sure I'm clear, for most seniors, their last day will be April the 28th. 
every year we do have some seniors um, that may have to come that following week to just to get cleared because they're not academically cleared. So um, they may have to work on some, they might have to do some additional work. But for 90% of our seniors, their last day is April 20th. So they will have to come to school a half day, then they can leave. Yes, ma'am. These are some important dates, but I actually have the calendar for April and May coming up so you can see a screenshot of both of those months. Um, visions originally was, I think, April 23rd. We did move it up a week, April 16th. The reasoning behind it being in April this year is that they are doing construction on our gym in May, and we want our kids to still have the experience of having their vision ceremony in our gym. So in order to do that, we just had to move the date up. So Visions is their baccalaureate. It's a nice performance. Um, we have our wonderful band director in the back. <laughs> um, and the band will be there. We have some magnet dancers dancing. It's just a nice presentation. It's also an award ceremony. Seniors last day, like Ms. Simmons said, is April 28th. Last day, this is happening on all Southside high schools, I'm assuming district-wide. Uh, but the last day for any senior to get cleared to participate in the graduation ceremony is May 5th. And then graduation is May 18th at 6 p.m. at the Gateway Center. And if you've been to the Gateway Center, seen a game, you do know that there's bleachers and stuff they're going to have to walk down. So the seniors will get ready outside the building. They'll have to walk in and walk down the stairs. They'll have to leave the same way which is why we highly recommend the ladies just don't wear heels. It's just not worth it. Questions? Yes. Is it a fee for parking? Whatever. Parking is $10, I believe. So I recommend carpool. Ooh. Hold on. What happened to the April calendar? Oh, there we go. I skipped it. All right. So this is the calendar for April. Um, we'll send this out. A reminder will be on the website as well. Um, Visions is April 16th at 10 a.m. Report time for all seniors will be 830. Unless they're in the corral, um, that might be about eight. Um, but that is the time for report time for all seniors. Because of that, we are going to have mandatory visions rehearsal, first and second period, Thursday the 13th. They'll go to normal class after that. Um, on Friday the 14th, we will have our senior signing day that morning. After that, they'll do visions rehearsal. And then they'll go to normal class. Prom again is April 28th. That is their last day, unless they're not passing classes, but they will be. Um, and again, they have to be here till I think 1130. When we get closer to prom, they'll get um, an early dismissal sheet to get your approval that it's okay that they leave or check themselves out at 1130. And then for May, everything's happening in April and May. Um, seniors clearance is gonna happen May 2nd. So if they are, if they are cleared academically, they pay their senior dues, they turn in their devices, textbook, all that kind of stuff. Then they will be cleared um, that day. We have a schedule, did not put it in here, but we have made a schedule um, for what that day looks like. They will come by alphabet. It'll be hosted in the theater lobby. We do need them to stick to the alphabet though. We don't need everybody coming at nine o'clock. We're not, it just won't work. Um, so it is by alphabet. When they are clear to graduate, this is where they will get their cap and gown. This is where they'll get their tickets. This is where they'll get their pearls. And no, they'll get that at Visions, but um, they'll get their tickets and their cap and gown May 2nd. If say they are not clear by May 2nd because they just need a little bit more time, um, they will have till Friday the 5th um, to get their final clearance. But our goal is to get 100% of our students cleared on Tuesday, May 2nd. And by um, so for some seniors, we do have some seniors that are taking AP classes, advanced placement classes. Those seniors would will have to come back for their AP exam. If they opted to take the AP exam, they would have to come back. We'll have to come back to take that exam. For example, AP biology is May 10th. If you're at a 
student, if your scholar is an AP vital, um, they will have to come back that day to take the AP exam. But they can leave after the exam. And all of those are listed in gray up on the screen as well. Um, again, graduation is May 18th. That week, we will have our senior breakfast along with graduation rehearsal, their senior picnic, again, along with graduation rehearsal. Um, and we will be busing the kids off campus those two days due to the fact that um, they're working on our gym. So we're going to head over to our feeder school, Polly West, and rehearse and come back to celebrate our seniors. And now for questions. So I'm going to start with online. Um, will a parent be able to upload the photo of their senior or the baby photo of the senior? No, it has to be the senior due to the way we did the form this time. If you are online ordering cap and gown, you can go to uh, herfjones.com. I'll type that for you. Who do you contact if you do not hear? I'll answer that one. That's it. Um, I will check and see if um, Mr. Shrewsbury will be back at Tri-Cities. That's it for online for parents in the room. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there like an overflow area at that place? There isn't, we, but we are live streaming it. So Y'all can have a watch party at home and they can hang out and have food and stuff. Well, we can tailgate. Hey, that you cannot do. <laughs> <laughs> they have made that very clear. Yeah, they have school flash it, tailgated in the parking lot. So every South Fulton High School is graduating at, at the arena, right? Westlake, Langston, Banneker, Creekside, Hapeville Charter. No tailgating in the parking lot. Unfortunately, some school that shall not be named um, tailgated last year, so they made it very clear no tailgating. And on that note, I think doors don't open until five because it's back to back. Once the school before us gets done, they have to deep clean the entire thing, make sure it's clean for everybody to go in. So doors for y'all do not open until five. Graduates will report to Tri Cities High School. I want to say last year was about three. They had to come here at three. We bust them over. There are a lot of reasons for that. One, it's safety, making sure they get to the venue safely, make sure they get there on time, make sure that people don't just try to pull them out and stuff. We bust them over, make sure they're in a secure area, they know where to go. And then after the ceremony, they will go home with you. So that's a process. So after the ceremony, They'll procession out. Um, that's where they will pick up their diploma. Once they receive their diploma, they'll exit out to give you that to meet y'all in the parking lot. Yes, sir. Can you all tell uh, you already pay for any cap and gown and what the senior dues? So I can tell you about senior dues. I can look that up at the end of this meeting for cap and gown. If you talk to Mr. Rick from Herb Jones, he can let you know who is paid for. I think he has a list. Uh, two questions. Um, what, I was a little unclear on what vigils were. Is it mandatory? Is it mandatory? Uh, for the most part, it's mandatory. I mean, there's some exceptions if they're out of town or that type of thing. Um, and it's an award ceremony, but it's also like they're, especially since it's a month before this year, it's kind of like their final trudge to graduation. So there's speeches involved, students are speaking, talking to the graduation class. There's a corral singing. It's kind of a production and award ceremony all in one. Okay, and I think that the AP exam and the child with the AP class, what, what date are their exams? It depends on the class. Yeah, taking. the schedule's up here on the calendar. Okay. Um, I'll Sweet. leave it up so you can take a picture, but we'll send it on mine, and this presentation will be on the website as well. You can also go to collegeboard.com and you can find the AP schedule there too. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what's the website for class rings? Class ring is with her films as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Vision ceremony, can, you, can anybody come? Or yes, yes. 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 There, there's not a limit on vision. If there are no tickets when it's full, then we have stopped the doors, but it hasn't been full in Ever. the last couple of years. Yeah. It's always known. Yes, ma'am. What is the senior website? Where do we go to? Mm -hmm. When you go to tricitieshigh.org, 
Yeah. So tricitieshigh.org on these scrolls. It says one class of 2023 website. Again, counseling website is up here as well. And then if you click here, you'll see all of our information. So this was the town hall presentation from January. Um, our next town hall presentation will have up here as well once we do that beginning of March. Um, and then tonight's presentation stuff will go here as well. Um, and then th these are all the links that you need. So how to pay your senior dues, senior pictures is over with, capping out information, all that stuff is here for you guys. So the specific thing I want to know is about the scholarships because I get the links in your mind, but sometimes they don't open fully. So Ms. Morrell, how are you sending out scholarship information? Is that through Naviance? Yes, we send it on Naviance. So whatever email you all have on file when you enroll the students here, that's the email address and that's linked to Naviance. But the students' email account are automatically linked to Navius. So if you have your student to go into their Navius account, at the very top in the right hand corner, there's like a little mailbox to the right where like you got mail and they can click in there and they can see all of the emails, um, scholarships, everything is going to on that. But in addition to it being placed there, it's placed on the website. The counselors also hold it on um, remind. So it's in several different places. And also, we do have a lot of college visits coming in. So you all should have received an email tonight that gave you a list of the colleges that are coming in the next few days. Um, one second. One thing I forgot to mention, um, I, I know. Kids were getting emails about this today, but capping out photos from Katie Studios is now available. Um, it's on katie.com slash cap 23. Yes, ma'am. I get that. They're telling her she has to wait for more orders to place. That order's been placed. Yes. We got an exception with the company to go ahead and place it. To place. Yep. Yes, ma'am. So stay and we'll, we'll hook you up. Visions is April 16th. Monday. When did they take um, pictures? Yearbook pictures has been done. Stay after we'll have a talk. Um, I'm going to... I know I was getting um, emails from someone who did some special. Katie? Yes, Katie Studios is who they took their photos through. It's $30. $30. This is the remind information um, so that you can sign up for this as well. So if you are on Remind, there should be an option to join a class. If you, when you log in, join a class, and you can select um, the code. There is one that's full. I think it's N through S is full, so don't join that one. We've had too many join that one. Is the uh, kids and toddlers required to have a ticket as well? It's two and under. Or under two. Two and over. Two and over have to have a ticket. Under two does not need a ticket. Uh, really quick, it's G through M that does not, that's full. So please don't join that one. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have Fulton County emails. Am I seeing it? I think so. Oh, yeah, if you're if you're a Fulton County employee because you're in the organization, you should submit a baby photo. But outside of that, it won't work with anything else. Other questions? If you have any questions about your child's tier, I will be here for a couple more minutes uh, to see you one on one. I have one more question. I see at the bottom it said. 
Yes, thank you. So the prom venue is in Midtown and they don't have their own parking. There is a parking deck, Caddy Corner across the street. So we're recommending that they just get dropped off. It's also just safer. Prom night, accidents happen. We'd rather some people hire a private driver or family drives them, but we recommend them getting dropped off. And then also if they like having special cars, again, it's safer for them being dropped off than sitting in a parking deck in downtown Atlanta. So, and people will see the car better out front than in a parking deck. You said what? Spider wouldn't be no good. I mean, they, they could be dropped off in it because that would look cool. But I would it just, you know what? to have her drive it so well, she could drive it and somebody could sit in the back and take it away it's a, it's a sling it's called a sling not a spider a sling oh, okay we're gonna get a colorful sling with the lights okay. <laughs> all right uh, make sure she's page one of her prom i got this section that um because we did it okay. i got you excuse me and um have, i know you have a thing about behavior administrator or somebody here Simmons. let me close this and then i'll do that um parents who are online we're going to end this meeting um and we'll answer any other questions that are in the comment section online so you can go back and see those on our website